Okay, so I was going to be doing a couple of videos uh, previous before I got stuck on the uh, Tower Carlara versus Paro. <laughs> Alright, which is, you know what I'm saying if you've been watching my videos, okay? <laughs> and uh, Hell versus Hinkle, okay? I think they're very important cases. Alright, uh, this is from John Flex. And um, I did watch the video, and I just never had time to kind of look up the Texas Code that the guy got arrested for. If you watch his show on News Now Ninja, you've seen the arrest with the guy, um, well, standing on his rights. <laughs> All right, so I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice, okay? Uh, it's just my opinions, my opinions only. Why? Because I'm not an attorney. I don't care to be an attorney. I don't want that little ball and chain wrapped around the judge's uh, ankles where I had to follow him around and bow down to the mighty king. Okay, so this is actually a Texas code, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of this, what everybody calls the right to travel. I call it right to movement, all right? Now, when I'm being seized, what are they doing? They're hindering my movement. And, you know, each to their own, okay? Uh, that's what's different from us, rest of us, right? I never look straight forward. I always look around me to be able to protect myself by any means necessary. I don't want to give them an inch so they can go ahead and take a mile, okay? So I'm going to even avoid traveling, okay? That's just me. Uh, you're impeding my movement. You seize me. My movement has been seized, Right? I'm not going to go with travel because, well, what is travel? It's still a movement. So let's, I'm just going to be outside the box, and I'm going to call it movement. All right? That's just me, people. All right, so this is going to be a long video because I'm going to do this video, which is going to be a follow-up video that I just found tonight. Okay? And just so you guys know, the other video is going to be called Freeman of the name, obviously. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, start off with this, okay? Now, Ninja, where this gentleman from Texas doesn't have a license plate up front, behind his car, uh, doesn't have a driver's license, at least he didn't show one during the traffic stop. And, of course, the cops were going nuts. They pulled him over for a, a license plate not being on his car, and he tried to tell them this over and over, but they weren't listening because they're brainwashed. So he kept repeating 502.003 Texas transportation code. And it pretty much says what I... All right, so even then, if you dared to be brave, okay, uh, you got to have your affidavit and your motions ready, right? So if they do go ahead and take you to jail, right, you're going to take it to the nearest magistrate. Remember, 543. Okay, you are under arrest. Well, wait a minute. How come they're not uh, letting you know about the Miranda rights? Just saying. That's Texas, though. Okay? I've been saying since the 90s, and everyone says I'm crazy, but just recently everyone's jumping on this uh, uh, driving versus traveling thing, and please, please, please let this catch fire because if Americans found out they didn't need a license or, or license plates to travel the country freely without government intervention, the whole system might collapse. And then maybe we can start working on the fact that there's no law that says you gotta pay income tax. This dog is so annoying, man. You will not leave me alone. Anyway, I go. So here it is, Texas Transportation Code 502.003. And I will link the video. Dog, you are annoying. I will link the video. Pause. All right, where was I? So here it is, Texas Penal Code. Oh, my God. Hold on. All right, Texas Transportation Code 502. It got my dog's attention as well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She can't make this shit up. 003. Current through the 87th Legislature through the call session for Section 502.003, Registration by Political Subdivision. Echo. What is a political subdivision? I have a few definitions for political subdivision in the context of military. One, any county or parish. Two, 
Except that the registration for voting is not conducted under the supervision of a county or parish three. The term shall include any other subdivision of a state which conducts registration for voting. Did that answer your question? I guess. Thanks for your feedback. So, any county or parish, it seems like. And here it is. Except as provided by subsection B, which we will get to, a political subdivision of this state may not require an owner of a motor vehicle to, one, register the vehicle, two, pay a motor vehicle registration fee, or three, pay an occupational tax or license fee in connection with motor vehicle. And then here's B, which I've been saying forever. This, B, this section does not affect the authority of municipality to license and regulate the use of a motor vehicle for compensation. Now, that being said, y'all, under the federal rules, okay, a motor vehicle is still considered compensation, and this this is in conflict with the federal guidelines, which we actually go by. So quit using motor vehicles. Everybody's saying, well, I'm not a driver. who just had it here and there. Well, no. By federal and state, quit using motor vehicle. Okay? You can quit using driver, too, because you're still not a driver either way it goes. But the motor vehicle word itself puts everything in commerce so even though this law says that you don't have to do 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 right that's fine and dandy in texas okay but you want to make it clearly established in law right uh if you're going to contest this in court okay and they're going to throw this into well motor vehicle still a federal law so therefore you must register your vehicle which is still commerce either way it goes but i'm just letting you guys know the motor vehicles what's in commerce or commercial activity within the municipal limits and impose a permit for fee or street rental charge for the operation of each motor vehicle used to transport passengers for compensation other than the motor vehicle operating under a registration certificate from the department or a permit from the federal federal surface transportation board a fear charge under subsection b may not exceed two percent of the annual gross receipts from the vehicle this section does not impair the payment provisions of an agreement of franchise between municipality and the owners or operators. We're going to pause right there. Now, since they're talking about commercial, it's not really a bill of attainer. It's a business, right? But it's on the people that's actually would be a bill of attainer. Such motor vehicle used to transport the passengers for compensation. So you see everything licensed that involves a license is because you're getting paid to use the taxpayer's property or roads to make a living. Thus, you have to be licensed and registered as a commercial entity to drive on the roads and part a is very clear no no a political sub subdivision of this state may not require the owner of a motor vehicle to register the vehicle pay a motor pay a motor vehicle registration fee or pay an occupational tax or license fee in connection with the motor vehicle so, like I've been saying for years, these are our roads. We already paid for them. It's stupid and ridiculous that we'd have to pay for permission to travel upon them. The reason you would need a license is because you're using the people's roads in an extra manner. You're not just using it to travel from point A to point B. You're using it to haul passengers or cargo for profit. And that makes sense. You need a license to trespass on the ladies. On the ladies on the people's roads because you're adding extra wear and tear and you're turning a profit and government can regulate commerce not free travel there's no commerce there's no profit being made or free movement right uh, again i'm thinking outside the box that's what i do okay now let's uh by the way thank you john flicks for that Let's do this. All right, so we're gonna come over here. Every state has a motor vehicle code, and as a driver, 
you are required to follow it? Or are you? I studied the Arizona Motor Vehicle Code, and this is what it said. The provisions of Chapter 3, Traffic and Vehicle Regulations, and Chapter 5, Penalties and Procedures for Vehicle Violations, refer exclusively to the operation of vehicles on highways. So, it's saying this only applies to vehicles. So we need to find out what exactly is a vehicle. Well, exactly, which goes back into the federal rules, federal law, okay, of the commercial capacity, not federal law against us, the people. The United States Code defines this for us in 18 U.S.C. 31A6. The United States Code defines a motor vehicle and it says this, the term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contravents propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways in the transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property or cargo. So, no, so right there, understand that. They gave the definition of motor carrier. That's the reason why I said back in my law, right, it says motor carrier. They're still considering motor carrier a form of business. So even if you pass it in the state, the judge can bring in the federal and actually put you back in commercial. So there we go. It's only a motor vehicle if it's used for commercial purposes. The United States Code also defines commercial purposes for us in 18 U.S.C. 31A10. It says the term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fair fee rate charge or other consideration or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. So if you are a taxi driver, bus driver, Uber driver, if you're hired to drive truck transporting property, then you have to follow the motor vehicle code because you are driving a motor vehicle because it's being used for commercial purposes. However, if you're just traveling in your car to work or the grocery store, then you do not have to follow the motor vehicle code because you are not driving a motor vehicle. Because remember, it says this refers exclusively to the operation of vehicles. Let's pause that back there for a second. Just the motor vehicle second. code because... Because, again, people, what do I do? I think outside the box, right? Um, now, I'm also going to go in my paperwork and challenge the person part, right? I'm going to rebut the person, okay? That's under commercial capacity, trust, commercial, business, whatever, okay? So I don't even want them to call me a person. My last video, we talked about how the judge... Um, went back and forth, argued with a man, calling him a person, and he argued with the judge, I'm not a person, right? They need the person, okay? Now, you see them right there? They're not children. They're offspring. Them are sons and daughters. Well, in this case, it's actually daughters, right? But they are not children, because it's the person under 18, which is back in trust. Right, for little ones, some type of form of trust, our business and all this kind of stuff, okay? So it just depends on the government, how they're using your kids against you. <laughs> all right, you never know the trickery words they use. So, they are not passengers, they are family and guests. Why? Is there laws out there to really calling out passengers? Eh, that's still debatable. I have not really seen clearly established it. But, you know, they got a lot of things hidden that I may not have found, right? I know that there's X amount of passengers for commerce. But if I have, I got 18 brothers and sisters. But if I stick them in a, a bus with me to travel to, uh, you know, another town on a camping trip, well, the government is still classify that what as a commercial. Why? Because they're passengers. They're not family and guests. So I still beg the difference, think outside the box, passengers and guests. Okay, let's stay away from the passenger, not passenger, stay away from the passenger and call them family or guest. Okay, 
Now, passengers don't have to identify themselves, right? But show me a law that a family or a guest actually has to identify themselves as well. Just saying. You are not driving a motor vehicle. Because remember, it says this refers exclusively to the operation of vehicles, and it's only a vehicle if it's used for commercial purposes. And since you are not using your car for commercial purposes, it's not a vehicle. So you do not have to follow the motor vehicle code. So that means you have the right to travel without a driver's license or registration. And this is all a And even if you want to say car, there's no really law established about car pickups or anything like that, right? Um, however, they like to use this pickup truck. <laughs> But I'm just going to go with private property. Think outside the box. That is not your car. That is your private property. ...to our beautiful U.S. code. But that's not all. The Supreme Court has also talked about this many times. Here is a U.S. Supreme Court citation from Thompson versus Smith. And they say, The right of a citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his or her property thereon by horse-drawn carriage, wagon, or automobile is not a mere privilege which may be permitted or prohibited at will, but a common right which he has under his right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Under this constitutional guarantee, one may therefore, under normal conditions, non-commercial use, travel at his inclination along the public highways or in public places, and while conducting himself in an orderly and decent manner, neither interfering with nor disturbing another's rights, he will be protected not only in his person, but in his safe conduct. So, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, if you look up personal liberty in Black's Law Dictionary 4th Edition, it says personal liberty is the right or power of locomotion, of changing situation or moving one's person to whatsoever place one's own inclination may direct without imprisonment or restraint unless by due course of law not code okay now they use that person in here y'all but do we get the definition of person that that definition is using right in government there's a little blue thing in there you can tap on there and find out what the definition of person they are using because remember Code is not law. In self versus Ray, they talk about this. They say, revised code of Washington is not the law. Code is actually a constructive contract. And in See, I, did not, I have not seen that ruling. I'm going to keep that in mind, which enhances I'm doing this video. So I'm going to keep this on my <laughs> record, right? From my personal record. Uh, for everybody to see. Graham versus Cummings, they talk about this, saying a constructive contract is where duty defines it instead of the contract defining the duty to be performed. Constructive contracts are fictions of law adopted to enforce the legal duties by actions of contract where no proper contract exists, express or implied. So, when traveling in non-commercial intercourse, there is no enforceable contract with the state of state without one's consent. Right, right there. Hell versus Hinkle. That needs to be added as well into this case. You want to box them in with their own stuff. But consent is given by silence, by compliance without claim of right, and complying when asked for the driver's license and handing it out the window, thereby giving tacit agreement of engaging in commercial intercourse. So, as long as you claim your right to trap... And this man, this free man, <laughs> right, he's spot on. This is what I've been talking about. Well, do not hand them your driver's license indicating that you are operating commercially because you only need a driver's license if you're operating commercially. So, by handing that to the police officer, you're saying, I'm operating commercially. So, as long as you do not hand them your driver's license and you claim your right to travel then you are not bound by the this motor vehicle code which is a constructive contract 
And the United States Supreme Court has held multiple times that the right of locomotion, the right to remove from one place to another according to inclination, is an attribute of personal liberty. In Robertson v. Department of Public Works, they say complete freedom of the highways is so old and well established a blessing that we have forgotten the days of the robber barons and toll roads, and yet, under an act like this, arbitrarily administered, the highways may be completely monopolized. If through lack of interest the people submit, then they may look to see the most sacred of their liberties taken from them one by one by more or less rapid encroachment. In Murdoch v. Penn, they say, A state may not impose a charge for the enjoyment of a right granted by the federal constitution and that a flat license tax here involves restraints in advance of the constitutional right secured by the First Amendment. And then in Shuttlesworth v. Birmingham, they say, if the state does convert your right into a privilege and issue a license and a fee for it, you can ignore the license and a fee and engage the right with impunity. And in Cruden versus... Right? So since I had a CDL, had, past tense, right? I had a CDL for operating in commercial. But since I get pulled over in my private property then I don't need to hand it to them now, of course, ignorance of the cops, right? I'm not reading case law, okay? You got to have to pick and choose your battles, all right? Uh, so you've got to have your documents ready on hand, your affidavit and your notices, okay? But when I'm home and I jump in my private property and not conducting business, there you go. CDO for commercial. And that Class uh, C license really is uh, a CDL. You are, right now, operating in commerce because you have a CDL license in your private automobile. You're just in conflict of interest now. As Neil, they even say this, Every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow man without his consent. So, if somebody makes... So, the follow-up, Hell versus Hinkle. <laughs> ...bunch of rules and says, hey, you have to follow my rules. No, actually, you don't. You don't have to follow anybody else's rules unless you consent to following those rules. Now, why have so many judges defended our constitutional right to travel... It's because any judge or magistrate who does not comply with his slash her oath. See, this right here is interesting because I somehow or another missed it, but it does sound familiar, so I may have misplaced it, or I just missed it altogether. But you need to keep this one. It's a need basis. That's for your property tax battle and say, hey, you know, you're not a taxpayer and all that, get out of the property tax. Um also federal taxes and all that kind of stuff and, and all these things right they got to uphold it and you put this in your records okay you're having court when you file records believe it or not you're putting it in your court records to the Constitution of the United States wars against that Constitution and engages in acts in violation of the supreme law of the land the judge is engaged in acts of treason. Obviously, a judge does not want to be engaging in treason. So, they Remember, they got qualified immunity under the 11th Amendment. But there's two things in there, and I can't remember what off the top of my head is. That's in previous videos I showed before, right? Um, but it's in there. There's two that actually waives their qualified immunity or absolute immunity and all that kind of stuff, okay? And do their best to defend your rights. The Constitution is a charter of negative liberties. It tells the state to let people alone. It does not require a federal government or the state to provide services, even so elementary a service as maintaining law and order. And that's exactly... All branch of Hale versus Hinkle, again. You're right. We just want to be left alone to live our lives how we want to live them. We just want to be free to do what we want. We just want the government to leave us alone. Stop trying to control everything we do. Constantly harass us. And some of you are probably thinking, 
I like the motor vehicle code. It keeps us safe. I don't want people driving all over. I don't want people driving around with no driver's license. So. All right. So we'll just finish up with him on that because it's going to be um, talking about that, right? You're the mom and dad of your offsprings. Be responsible. Make sure your offsprings are engaged in a safe manner for their self-protection. Govern their cells of their uh, movement out on the highways and byways. Okay. Now that being said, you shouldn't get pulled over for going 125 miles an hour. Okay. However, that is a safety issue, but there's no victim, no crime. Okay. If you get into a wreck, right, and you kill somebody, you, because there's actually a, basically what you guys call a social contract, that everybody agreed to go roughly around 70 mile an hour, 75 mile an hour, but you're running 120 mile an hour. Well, you went excessive, you caused a victim, and the victim passed away. Therefore, you may need to go ahead and spend the rest of your life behind bars. Okay? That's going to be up to the judge and you. But when you challenge their authority, they're probably going to give you the maximum. So, when you do this, go out there in honor uh, and watch out for everybody's safety and govern yourselves, people. Okay? And uh, go to this guy. I have not seen him. this only video I've seen of him. But check out his video, Free Man. I just love the name, period. All right? You know how I feel about that. Okay? He's just talking about how you go out there and uh, teach your kids and all that. To liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And please, every time... You <laughs> slightly break a rule every time you go six miles per hour over the speed limit or roll through a stop sign. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin once said, Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor... And I wish to put, the, put that in there, right? He's one of the founding fathers. Wink, wink. Okay. But do you? Now, we all know that the Supreme Court says officer is not for your safety, right? Well, basically what the Supreme Court says uh, for your safety, you know, um, you got to govern yourselves, whether you're a person or whether you're a man or a woman, okay? They cannot get to your house to save you when criminals are in pursuit of criminal activities in your house already. It is just impossible. 5% of the time maybe they could do it uh, before there's been harm upon you. And this is what I don't like about these uh, uh, safety protection vices that the government is trying to uh, restrict us from, right? Cops are minutes away and you got seconds to survive. And the government is saying, well, officer is not for your safety, and we're not going to give you nothing for your safety. <laughs> All right. So uh, you can finish this up with the rest of his videos. All right. Uh, this is Diesel We The People News. Okay? Till next time. Bye, y'all. Oh, P.S. I'm going to bring some other ones in here. It goes into a little bit more detail, and I found them uh, on an accident because I, I try to do research on paper on, in law, and then I try to find YouTubes that actually help me put on my uh, profile so it keeps it keeps reminding me of what I, I have found, right? Because I, I don't remember a lot of laws I looked up previous to this YouTube channel. Till next time. Bye, y'all.